Good morning all. I hope you are well. <clears throat> well, some of you may have seen, um, I made this pipe. Originally, this was going to be a cobra, but due to a couple of fissures, these are expansion cracks on the bowl, um, I couldn't sell it. So I just, I discarded it. But um, when I looked at the grain, I figured it's a shame to waste such a gorgeous pipe. It's got really, really beautiful grain. Um, so I decided to carry on and make a pipe out of it. Um, the cracks don't go right through to the bowl, they're just on the outer edge. So um, I figured I'll make myself a pipe or possibly sell it as a second. And since uh, showing the pipe in one of my videos, I've had a lot of interest in it. Quite a few people have said that they'd like it as a second. Um, so I figured that rather than sort of choose one person over another, um, I'll do what I originally intended, which is to smoke it myself. So apologies to all of you who wanted it. Um, I appreciate your uh, interest, um, but I'm going to smoke it myself. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some tobacco out. Um, so what I t tend to do is when I first, when I have my first few smokes in a, in a new pipe, I use a quite a full flavored tobacco. Um, as I've said many, many times, I don't enjoy the taste of fresh burning briar um, it's the reason why I put honey in it and which I'll do in a second um, and it's also the reason why I have a, a full flavored tobacco um, oftentimes I will break it in with a McClellan's Virginia because um, that's a still a, a, a Virginia rather than a, an aromatic pipe or a Latakia smoke an aromatic uh, tobacco or a Latakia tobacco so rather than commit to a particular genre I still prefer to break it in on a Virginia, on a neutral tobacco. So McClellan's fits that bill because it's so, because uh, they get such a full flavor out of their tobaccos. But this morning, I'm gonna go for some Erin Moore Flake. Erin Moore Flake is a light aromatic. It's, it's mainly um, Virginia's. Um, I think there's possibly some Burley in there as well. Um, and there is a, a fruity kind of topping on it as well. I find the topping to be quite light. Some people say that it's uh, heavy. It's all according to your palate. A lot of people even call it a Lakeland, which I do not see at all. Um, I hate Lakelands, but I love this stuff. So go figure. To me, there's a whole argument about um, on the tin. I don't have an Erin Moore tin here. I don't think I do. Um, hang on. Oh, yes, I do. I have one which has got my little bits and pieces in, my screws and things. So if you have a look over there, this little emblem, this little fig leaf or whatever it is up there, that used to be a pineapple. A picture of a pineapple. Um, so there used to be an argument about whether there's a pineapple flavoring on it. I personally do get a little bit of pineapple. Um, I always said so even before I knew about that emblem being on the tin. Um, other people just say it's a, like a juicy fruits type of flavor which I get too um, and some people even call it a Lakeland. Um, I don't get any kind of floral notes here at all. None of the classic Lakeland uh, flavors, the um, geranium, rose petal, any of that kind of stuff. Um, there's none of that in here to my taste. It's just a nice, gentle, fruity aromatic, a little bit of tangy fruit. Um, I think it's a fantastic tobacco. Um, it's a tobacco that I'll often turn to when I don't know what I'm in the mood for. Um, and it just seems to hit the spot. Um, so now, let that dry for a minute or two. Now, the pipe itself. So, any obviously, whenever you start any new pipe, it's important to make sure that it's clear of any debris. Um, and uh, sometimes, I must admit, when I send out a new pipe, I'll forget to, to clean it through um, and get rid of the dust. I usually do, but it's possible that one forgets sometimes. So, always just put a pipe cleaner through it, ideally with a bit of alcohol or something. Um, and... Just take it all the way through. Take the stem off. Give it a good clean. Just blow it through. Right, and 
and obviously if you use filters, put a filter in. Now people have um, differing reasons why they use um, why they use honey. I use honey simply as a means to create a barrier between the fresh burning briar um, and to help. The most important reason is to assist and speed up the development of a carbon cake, um, a layer inside the bowl of the tobacco, which helps to protect the briar um, so that it doesn't get burnt out. Um, it helps to keep the temperature of the pipe even, uh, to stop it overheating. I mean, that will happen with a new pipe anyway. You can't really avoid it with a new pipe. I mean, you can obviously puff very slowly to avoid overheating, of course. So you just want a thin layer of honey all the way around the pipe. Just try to coat everywhere inside the pipe. And then uh, you just get a tissue and wipe the rim. Because uh, you're always going to get a little bit on the outer edge of the rim. And then you're good to go. Sometimes on some pipes, I'll even do it again on the second and third bowl add the honey again if it's um, I wouldn't do it with a narrow bowl this is quite a narrow bowl this one because it's shallow and I did it with a, a tapered bit so the bit hadn't had the chance to widen because it was so shallow so it's quite a narrow um, bowl which suits me very well uh, it's well it's actually not that narrow well yeah it is at 17 mil yeah it is narrow um, I'm usually at around 20 21 mil So it's actually a really small bowl, but um, that actually suits me very well because I tend to prefer half bowls of tobacco anyway. So that should be just fine for me. So I can load that up to the top and not worry about it taking me an hour to smoke through. When I'm working, oftentimes I prefer to just smoke and then finish the pipe before I get into work in, onto something and then come, rather than coming back two hours later um, and it doesn't taste so good. tasting good um, and it should hopefully not overheat too much because the walls are really thick on this pipe so that's how I start off my new pipe it's how I break in a pipe um, the general um, held belief seems to be that if you want to break in a pipe just keep smoking it day after day um, whereas the the general philosophy is that people say don't smoke a pipe day after day, smoke it for a day, then let it rest for a few days, let it dry out. And then smoke it again. But if you're not the type of smoker that smokes one pipe all day, um, let's say you have a bowl in the morning and then you put it down, then to go back to it the next day and the next day for a few days, I don't think it's a major issue. Um, and what that's doing is, is if you particularly, if you assign it to a particular tobacco, 
you're going to be injecting, infusing the flavors of that tobacco into the fresh briar. Um, so I don't think that's such a problem. I think in, in, in our generation of pipe smokers, we're much fussier about how we look after our pipe collection. In, in the days of yore, um, people had two or three pipes and they just smoked the out of them. And literally, they'd have one pipe or two pipes and they'll smoke them all the time. Um, and uh, they'll cake up and they'll you know get to a point where there's no room left for tobacco anymore because there's so much cake and they would just sling them. They would just throw the pipe away and replace the pipe. So the idea of letting a pipe rest and, you know, we're very fussy about that, but, you know, if you don't let it rest for a few days, it's not the end of the world. I'm alternating between tampers. This is uh, the tamper that James made me, a beautiful tamper, which I use pretty much all the time. But when I'm starting off a pipe, any pipe, new or old, this one has a perfectly flat base. In fact, when I make tampers, I actually invert it and I make a sort of a, a convex or concave, is it? A concave inner, an inner curve um, on the base. And that gives you a very nice shape. To the cherry you want the cherry to be like a very small dome um with the sides being lower than the top or in the very least completely flat this one has got rounded edges and it would do the opposite it makes a u-shape what you actually want is an end shape very shallow one but an end shape nonetheless so i do use this once i've got the thing properly lit but um, a flat based tamper is really ideal or one at least which has got a curve of an N shape, not a U shape. And don't push down, don't ram the tobacco in, just tap it, just gently tap it. All the, the whole idea of tapping, all you're doing is connecting the burning tobacco to the non-burning tobacco underneath it. That's all you're doing, is to, make, to help keep your pipe alight. Uh, I think I've actually packed it a little bit tight, that's why I have to keep lighting it. There's not enough air getting to it. So, I'm very happy that I've kept this for myself. And again, sorry to everybody else. This is the pipe that I'm working on at the moment. This is a, a Calla Lily. Um, I've got to redo the stem. I, I messed up the stem yesterday, so I've got to start another one. So, trying to put in some sort of natural looking curves, you know, the ends of the leaf sort of curling up as it dries, like you would on a flower. So I'm trying to just make it look as realistic as possible. And uh, it's coming along nicely. Um, I might cut another stem today, we'll see. Um, I don't think I'll be going live today, though it's a short day for me today. Um, but um, for now, I'm going to wish you all well. And for all those who celebrate the Jewish New Year, I wish you all a happy new year. A happy new, sweet new year, prosperous year, healthy year. And may we all um, get rid of this darned COVID, which is uh, blighting the planet. Let's hope that in the very, very near future, we will see the back of it. I wish you all well. I thank you all for your support. Um, I thank everybody for all the great comments. Um, I was watching uh, Onion, 2 a.m. Pipe on Tobacco, 2 a.m. Pipe on the Patio, and he was talking about not catching up with his comments and you know spending time now catching up. I have the same problem. I think a lot of us do. Um, it's not easy to keep uh, completely on top of comments, and I think I might do the same as him and do a, a cramming session and go back the last few videos and, and, and reply to comments. But I uh, certainly want to take this opportunity to thank everybody for all your support. It's been a wonderful year, despite everything. And, um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you and sharing this wonderful hobby with you for the next coming year. 
All the very best. Catch you on the next one.